Hello, my name is Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. And we know that Apple are fully committed to its own silicon, the Apple silicon, as they call it, which of course uses the ARM architecture. Now, of course, previously, most things were dominated by x86 from Intel or from AMD, including the Macs and including on Windows. But there's also a version of Windows for ARM. And of course, you've seen my review, I hope, of the Surface Pro X, which uses the Qualcomm Snapdragon processor running Windows 10 on ARM. And I've also got a couple of videos about showing how you can put the Windows 10 on Raspberry Pis, because of course they use ARM chips as well. And the question is, can you put Windows for ARM on a new M1 MacBook? The answer is yes, if you use a virtual machine. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a piece of software called UTM, which allows us to create a virtual machine on the MacBook and then run the native version of Windows for ARM on that, which means you're not getting emulation, you're getting near full speed uh, processing power because it will be using the actual processor, the M1 processor itself. OK, so let's get cracking. OK, to run Windows 10 on our Mac, we're going to be using UTM. It is an open source virtualization product for iOS and for MacOS. As you can see here, the window there showing you running uh, Windows uh, XP. Now, here it is. This is the important thing. Windows, Linux, meet Apple Silicon. UTM employs Apple's hypervisor visualization framework to run ARM64 operating systems on Apple Silicon at near native speeds. And of course, this is also available for, for Intel Macs. So what we're gonna do is be able to run Windows 10 and we, we could even run uh, Linux using the native versions. And in fact, because it also has built-in uh, QEM, we could actually emulate uh, x86 versions of these operating systems. We're not gonna be doing that today. Now, one thing it's worth noting here is what's the difference between the Mac Store version and the free version? Basically, if you download the one from the Mac Store, you can pay for it and it's a way of contributing to the project. So if you want to do that, that's highly recommended. And then you help out the developers there. OK, so I've downloaded it. So let's go ahead. OK, so here we are inside of uh, UTM, a pretty simple uh, interface. Now, before we go on to create our virtual machine, let's go and browse the UTM gallery, which shows us the things that are available and actually helps us find the downloads for them so you just click on this here okay now here inside of the gallery we can see Arch Linux for ARM we can see uh, Debian for ARM we can see lots of other different OS's and down here at the bottom is the Windows OS's Windows 10 for ARM 64 Windows 7 if we wanted to run it under emulation and Windows XP if we wanted to run it under emulation so let's click on that Windows 10 now it tells us here this is for the ARM 64 version right, so what do you do down here you can see the downloads and then the instructions will follow through in a moment but we download U10 well we did that already so the first step now is to download Windows for ARM. So click on this link here. Now this takes you through to the Windows Insider preview download page because the current version that works is from the uh, Windows Insider program. Now to get access to it, you need to be a member of the Windows Insider program. I already am. If you're not, you can sign up without a problem. So I'll go ahead and log in. OK, so now I'm logged in. It says here, look, with Windows 10 on ARM Insider preview builds, you can create ARM 64-bit ARM uh, VMs on Windows 10 ARM-based PCs, OK? And obviously, you can't do it on an Intel-based PC. But notice it says here you need to have an SQ1, a Microsoft SQ1 processor. That's what you find in the Surface Pro X or the SQ2 or a Snapdragon 8CX. But of course, what we're finding out is we can actually use the Apple Silicon. It works uh, just as well. So what we need to do is download the uh, VHDX file from this page and then we'll go ahead and create uh, an actual uh, an actual virtual machine. So let's just click on here. Now the file we downloaded is a VHDX file and there are some bugs in QEMU that means that sometimes the system image can get corrupted. I've actually had that while I've been preparing for this video. So the way around it is to install QEMU on your Mac and then convert the file. So we're going to do that with Brew. If you don't have Brew installed, then go over to the Brew a homepage, there'll be a link in the description below, and we're going to install QEMU. Now, the information on how you do this conversion is here in the troubleshooting section at the very bottom of that Windows 10 page. And basically, we're going to run this QEM image convert command and uh, 
fix up that problem. Now here's something I don't tell you on that uh, troubleshooting section we just looked at. Before you run the convert command, you're gonna need to replay the log because this has uh, some journals that need to be finished. So you do check minus R all, and then you provide that uh, file, which is there on my desktop. And now that we've done that, we can run the actual convert command where we are giving it minus P, minus O, QCAL2, the name of the file, and then where we want to put it in the same directory here on my desktop, but with a QCAL2 extension on it. And that's working now, and you can see over here on the right-hand side, the new file has started. So once that finishes, we can then use that file as the base of our uh, virtual machine that we're going to create. Okay, now that we have the virtual disk prepared, let's go ahead and click on create a new virtual machine. We're gonna call it Windows 10, and the icon is gonna be the operating system style. Okay, we go over here to system, we tell it that it is a ARM64 system, and let's give it, I don't know, 4096 of RAM. Let's see what that does. And we need also to go over to drives and we now need to import that drive that we've created. See here there are two versions. We want to use the QCAL2 version and we want to change this here to NVMe. It already understands that it is a disk image. And we also want to go to new drive and we want to create ourselves a removable uh, USB drive because that's going to be where we install the guest tools the spice tools will appear in there and we'll set that up later okay that's all we need to do for now so let's go ahead and save that and now here you can see is the virtual machine create if we go right down to the bottom here select the uh, dvd go to browse and then pick the spice guest tools which you should also have downloaded from that same place there on that page, that gallery page for Windows 10. That means that the, the uh, guest tools, the drivers that we need will be available once we boot up the machine. Okay, let's click on go. And so you can see here that we're going through a normal kind of PC boot uh, setup. Of course, this is a virtual machine, but of course it is um, sort of simulating, emulating an entire PC. And so shortly we'll start with the Windows uh, setup process. Okay, so up has come the first part of the window setup. This should be familiar to anybody who's used to installing Windows. So we just need to go through this now and uh, complete the, the window setup. Now, if you find, like I am now, you haven't got a mouse, you can go up to the top here and click on this mouse capture, which then gives you the mouse inside of the virtual machine. Okay, I'll go ahead and just set this up. Okay, now that has booted up. If we go over now to uh, Windows uh, File Explorer, and we should find that the uh, guest tools are here inside of the CD drive. Yes, they are. And so we just run this now to install the drivers that we need inside this virtual machine. And one other thing to do before we shut this down is to do a right hand click on the desktop, go to display settings and you'll see that there are two displays and we want to just change it to, to display only on one. That's what we need to do, keep those changes. Okay, and now we're gonna reboot the machine. There's some quick changes to make back in the virtual machine settings and then that's it, we're basically done. So there we go, let's go to shutdown. Okay, so back here in um, UTM and what we need to do is go over to settings here and in sharing, we want to enable directory sharing and that will allow us to be able to transfer files back and forth from our virtual machine. Okay, now that's done, let's reboot it. Okay, so that's rebooted now. And I should be able to set now a greater screen resolution. Here we go, let's go with something a bit better, let's go with full HD. Yes, keep those changes, great. Okay, so there we have it. Now, you do have internet connectivity at this point, although down here the little icon shows that you don't, you actually do. So we could just go over to the Android Authority website. As you can see, we've got internet connectivity, no problem at all. 
Okay, so there we have it. That is Windows 10 up and running in this virtual machine. Let's quickly go down here to about your PC. And let's just check that there we are running the uh, full 64 ARM, 64 bit version of this. As you can see here, 64 bit operating system ARM based processor. That is what we're running. So there you go. There you can now use it on your, uh, on your uh, Mac. Just want to quickly mention before I go about the Gary Explains newsletter. Once a month, I send you information about all the videos I've been doing here on YouTube, about everything I've written over on the Android Authority site, plus a look at other things that I have found interesting on the internet. If you want to subscribe, go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, just that newsletter. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, well, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.